The sun is rising over Chabuli, a lower income neighborhood nestled in the middle of Kampala, Uganda. Adults rise early to start the long walk to work downtown while their children prepare for school. Today, we will follow the life of Sheila, a 21-year-old Ugandan girl who has grown up in this neighborhood, and you will get an immersive look at what a typical day is like in this small corner of the world. Sheila lives in a small room rented by her parents for 150,000 Ugandan shillings per month. With no alarm clock, she wakes up by the sounds of activity in the narrow streets outside her humble abode. These rooms don't have toilets, and it is considered dangerous to leave at night, so the first thing she does is empty her chamber pot in the community's garbage disposal. It is a receptacle used for all manner of household waste. Like anywhere else in the world, Sheila must now brush her teeth, using the garbage disposal as a makeshift sink. Now it is time to shower. She pays 200 Ugandan shillings to the lady who owns the well and fills up her jerry can with water. This water will last the whole day. She pours some into a smaller container to take a shower. This is their shower area. It also serves as a urinal, which is interesting. The people hang their towels on the bar for privacy. It is time for breakfast. So Sheila uses some of the remaining water to make tea. 
She will leave it boiling as she goes into the center of the ghetto to buy food. The best thing about low-income neighborhoods like Chibuli is that they are very walkable. When people don't have time to cook in the morning, they simply grab popular street food like Rolex. The vendor prepares homemade chapati bread he made the previous night, adding flour to help the process. Next, he places the bread on a hot skillet coated with oil, massaging it into its final shape. An egg is fried before being combined with the chapati to make the Rolex. One of Uganda's well-known dishes, this simple but filling meal costs just 2,000 Ugandan shillings, making it a staple food in low-income communities. Are you praying? Are you praying? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I thought you're supposed to pray before eating. Taking tea because it is hot. Ah. Yeah. So I guess you pray it doesn't burn you. <laughs> yeah. Something is on Sheila's mind. She is unhappy with her hair today and wants to get it fixed but she doesn't have the money. She calls her simp to ask for assistance. Hello. Good morning, Wasuzotia. Yeah, I'm okay. Nice to see you in jail. Bye. So how much did you get? How much will he send you mobile money? Thirty. Job well done. <laughs> so how important is money in Ugandan relationships? What can what what I can say is that okay, money is important because me as a lady, okay, if if they are, if I'm given that money, I'm going to okay, it's going to help me in many things like because I can't I can't look actually bad in front of my guy. So I'll use that money to buy some stuff like things that can, help, can that can help me that can help me to look good in front of my guy. Mm -hmm.
athletic. Count up a hundred like prosthetics. Talking about a bag, you got bad credit. New Air Max, we don't use debit. Call it, brand new deals keep calling. Tell them bring them through, need all them. For a whole kid still balling. Sheila leaves her neighborhood to visit her favorite salon in Cabala Gala. Here, she'll use the simp's money to do her hair. Hey, nigga, I'm proud of you. That money a mile or two. Then after, then I work on my nails. Yeah, as you can see right now, she's going to start working. But first, there's the issue of price. Can we talk? Excuse me. So we'll look again for price. Yes. Okay. Uh, we're going to take them to tonight. The service will only cost ten thousand Ugandan shillings, which is around two dollars and fifty cents. The stylist starts by washing Sheila's hair, rubbing in shampoos and moisturizers. Why do you like coming to this salon? Actually, it looks good. It has customer care, so I like it very much. And these are also my friends, you know? Ah. Yeah. How long have you been coming here? Now, she adds more conditioner before blow drying Jimmy Neutron's hair. So, Sheila, what are they going to do next? The hair she is getting is called Muswahili, a popular and affordable style named after the Swahili people of Kenya and Tanzania. But first they must braid her hair before applying the wig. <laughs> The style is a bit, uh, let me say, artificial by Western standards, but for just two and a half dollars, with labor included, it's a great deal. <laughs> Sheila plays with the new hair all the way home. 
Over the last five years, connectivity has surged in Africa, even in slums and villages. Young people spend their time exactly the same way as their counterparts in the US, on TikTok and even Netflix. Damn. As night falls, Sheila gets ready to head out, making good use of her new hairstyle. But that's easier said than done. Her sister, Sandra, helps her put it on. Oh? Wow. Oh, you look very good. <laughs> really? Yeah. See, now we begin to jail with cans. No, not very Twerk. A twerk. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> it's time to hit the road. Although it looks sketchy, these areas are not considered particularly dangerous until it gets very late. Think 3 or 4 a.m. I might go there, go for eons. Friend like you on, you be on. Pull up in the Tesla, Elon. Sandra and Sheila leave their ghetto to visit the nearby neighborhood of Kabalagala, which is the main spot for street food and nightlife in the area. See ya. First, they will need a ride, and motorcycle taxis cost around 1,000 Ugandan shillings, which is like 25 cents. To start the night, they use the leftover money to buy chicken from a street food vendor. And the rest is history.